Hi everyone, this is Brian MacDonald, author of Practical Stress Analysis with Finite Elements, and this is the first video in the Basic Stress Analysis with ANSYS series. So today we're going to be looking at a fairly simple problem. A lot of the information, if you want to get the book, you can get it at, from Amazon, or you can get, buy it as an ebook from various sources, or you can get it in your local bookshop. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about before we actually look at doing some ANSYS is units. Okay, so the most important thing in FEA is to have a consistent unit system. So on page 18 of the book, which which is reproduced here you can see here are some consistent unit systems I'm going to stick with the SI system because it's very easy to deal with so in other words we enter units of length in meters units of time in seconds units of force in newtons etc etc okay so we're going to stick with these so it's very important that it's not millimeters it's meters so if we have something that's 10 millimeters long we're going to enter that dimension as 0 0.01 so let's go on and look start looking at semances Okay folks, so here we are in ANSYS. I recommend that you actually use the product launcher because in the product launcher you can actually set up the working directory and also give your current uh, analysis a file name. If you haven't done that and even if you have just to check it, it's always the first place to start is always to go up here file. Okay, and the first thing change directory. So I'm working in my directory called my ANSYS files, where's which is where I keep all my ANSYS analysis. So that that's okay. So if if you're not working in a directory like that that you've set up yourself, if it's in a temporary directory or if it's on some kind of a network drive, then you may need to actually consider setting up a, a, a proper directory for all your analysis. And then I'm just going to check the job name, which is also the file name. So in this case, it's it's the default that ANSYS uses, which is file. It's a very bad idea to actually go ahead and keep using that because what's going to happen is that every time you come into ANSYS again, it's going to call the new analysis file as well. And you're going to start overwriting your files and you're not going to know basically which analysis is which and the results files and the other files that are written during solution are all going to get mixed up as well. So the first thing you should always do is come in and change this, this file name. So I'm going to call this um, basic stress analysis 1. You can call it whatever you like. Okay, so okay. So you'll see now that up here the title has changed to that. So anytime I press the save analysis button now it's going to save it to that file name. Okay. So the idea with ANSYS is that we um, work our way down this main menu here. And working your way down through this main menu also corresponds with the way the book is laid out as well. So if you're working your way through the book, you'll see you come to things in the, in the, in the same manner. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we've a preprocessor to build our model, we have a solution module to solve our module, and then we've got a post-processor to actually look at the results after we've got some solution. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is open up our preprocessor. And the first thing we see there is element type. Okay, so again, we're going to work our way down through this, this um, menu here. We're going to start by defining an element type. Then we're going to define some real constants if we need them, then material properties. Then we're going to make a model. We're going to mesh it. We're going to apply some loads, and then we're going to solve it. Okay, so in this case, we're going to set up an element type. So we're going to start with a fairly simple analysis, and we're going to go straight into a 2D plane stress analysis. So I'm going to pick a quad eight node element. Okay, if at any stage you want to know what's going on here, you can click help. And when you click help, it'll open up the ANSYS um, help module and you can see what, what you actually are picking. So in this case, it gives me a, a library of element types that didn't actually show me the particular one that I, uh, I looked for. I can click here on pictorial summary. Um, it's a um, solid element. Okay, so again, I can go to solid elements. It's number 1A3. Um, so again, I can work down this menu and find uh, number 183 and get a, a picture of it. <laughs> I should be able to. Actually, it's not a solid, it's a plane because it's a 2D element. Uh, so plane, and again, uh, 183. So here we go, so there's the shape of that element. Okay, let's just click on that. So it's, it's a flat uh, plane element. It's got eight nodes and it's got a quadratic formulation, which means it's got curved sides. So again, if you don't know some of these phrases I'm talking about, it's it's all explained in the book. Okay, so let's just close that down for now and let's just accept that. If we go to options, this particular element type has um, a number of different behaviors it can have. So it can be axisymmetric, it can be plane strain, it can be plane stress with thickness, um, or it can be generalized plane strain. Okay, for the moment we're going to say plane stress with thickness. Again, they, these are all... Sorry, um, explained in the book as well. Okay, so let's go plane stress with thickness. Okay, close. Um, 
we're finished with the element type um, menu now we can close that down so the next thing I want to click on is real constants in this case we need a real constant because we have actually um, d d picked the um, plane stress with thickness option so we need to actually define what the thickness is if you picked one of the other options you don't need a real constant okay so let's go to add edit delete add okay and real constant set number one um, for plane 183 which is what we want Set the thickness to one millimeter so we're using an SI unit system so one millimeter is 0 0.001 let's go OK and let's go close OK the next thing we want to do is set up a material model we're going to go for a material model um, that represents um, just a kind of a generic steel here OK so let's go um, in here we have structural thermal CFD acoustics we're doing a stress analysis a structure analysis we want structural um, we're going to pick the simplest one which is a linear material model a linear elastic model and isotropic so linear elastic means it behaves in a linear manner it obeys Hooke's law so stress is proportional to strain according to a certain slope which is dictated by Young's modulus okay so this type of model is not suitable if you expect some yielding your model and again this is all covered in the book as well isotropic just means it has the same properties in all directions okay so it's a very very simple model so it asks us for two things here EX which is Young's modulus so for steel let's just say it's 210 e to the power of 9 so that's 210 by 10 to the power of 9 or 210 gigapascals so remember it has to be entered in pascals for the SI unit system and this is Poisson's ratio to this set 0.27 which is a typical value for steel and let's go OK. So we can close this down. We've done our material element type. We've done our real constants. We've done our material properties. Sections we don't need in this case. If we were using a beam element or a shell element, we'd need to go into sections and d define the cross sections of those or the, the layups. We don't need them here. Let's go straight on to modeling. I'm just going to create a very simple um, model here. I'm going to create a block, OK, or a square. So I'm going to go areas, rectangle by two corners. And I get this dialog box here. So I'm going to say that its uh, bottom uh, left-hand corner is the zero, 00 position. And let's make a block that's 100 millimeters wide and 100 millimeters high. OK, so 100 millimeters is 0.1 uh, of a meter. OK, so let's go OK. So there's our block. Um, so that's our geometry in this case. So we can close down modeling. We don't need to do anything else to that. Now let's go to meshing. We click meshing. The easiest thing to use here is the mesh tool. So I'll click mesh tool and I get this uh, dialog box opening here. Okay, so we're going to, if you can see down here, we have mesh areas, which is what we want. So we haven't got volumes or lines or anything like that, so mesh areas is what we want. We want it to be in a quad shape, in other words, a square or rectangle, not in a triangle shape free and mapped. In this case we're going to use a mapped mesh because we've got a very regularly sided geometry and in other words it's going to align the element edges with the ele with the edges of the geometry and give us a nice regular mesh. So we're going to go say mesh or sorry mapped mesh. Now if we just go mesh and take what, what ANSYS gives us it, it's probably not going to be quite a very good mesh. Let's just see what it does. So you click mesh and it says mesh areas pick the area. So again if a box comes up here and you don't know what it's asking you look at the bottom down here pick or enter the areas to be meshed. Okay, we never pick the area and go OK. So it's given us um, four elements. Okay, so clearly that's that's not a good mesh. Okay, that's that's just not good enough. Um, in this case it may actually be but if we had something like a hole in there or something like that it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a good mesh. So let's as an exercise just see what would happen if we needed to increase um, the density of that mesh. Okay, so we can go back in here and go clear. So let's clear that mesh and go OK again go back to the mesh tool I now have size controls here so I could set an area set or a line set um, so let's just get our block back up here if it disappears just go up to plot and areas there it is back again if the mesh tool um, disappears I can click this button up here raise hidden and that brings it up for me okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, set the lines in this case okay so I'm saying line set and I'm going to pick all the lines around the edge there and I'm going to divide all of those by 10 okay so number of element divisions 10 I just go okay so you may be able to see there I'll just turn get a line plot so you can plot lines the lines are now divided into 10 okay so now let's mesh with that size control placed on the geometry and now I get a 10 by 10 nice mesh okay 
So that's just a quick introduction to meshing. Okay, so we've done the mesh. Next thing we're going to do is apply some loads. So loads, define loads, apply, structural, displacement, on lines. Okay, so I'm going to hold that bottom line down there. So I'm going to pick that line and go OK. I'm going to say hold all degrees of freedom. Okay, so that line is held. Nothing along that line can move. I could also have picked the nodes along that line if I wanted to as well. But in this case, then the nodes are aligned along a line, so it's it's easy to pick the line. Later on, we'll see we manage to 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 have different workarounds for that. But this is such a simple problem; it's easy just to pick lines. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to pull the top line up there. Okay, so I'm, I've held the bottom line. I want to put a force going up up here. So I'm going to apply again loads, define loads, apply structural. In this case, um, I'm going to apply a pressure load. Okay, a surface load on that line. Okay, and in the next video we'll come back and look at how you could actually apply a force. But for now, let's just apply pressure. So let's click on that line. Um, it asks me for the pressure value. Let's put on one megapascal. Okay, one e to the six. Okay, and you can see it's actually oh, it's gone the wrong direction. Okay, so it's applied it um, in the negative y. Okay, which is the default value. And again, you know, let's see how we can get around that. So for every apply command, there's a delete command. So we go into delete, structural, pressure, on lines, pick the line, go OK, go back into the apply menu, apply the pressure on the line. OK, and this time, let's just put in a negative value. You can see it answers this automatically turn the 1E6 into uh, 1 million. Go OK, now it's going in the right direction. OK, let's just close down these menus. So we've worked our way down to the preprocessor, so we don't need that anymore. So it's just a good idea to save every now and again, should have mentioned that. Uh, now we go into solution, analysis type, new analysis. We're going to just use static analysis. What that means is we're assuming that there's no vibration in the system, that when the load is applied, the structure just gradually deforms. So it doesn't, it doesn't have any vibration um, or any dynamic effects. OK. Um, solution controls, we don't actually need this, it's a small displacement static, so we're assuming that we're below the yield point of the material, which is why we can use a linear elastic material model, um, and we can just leave everything else the same for, for this simple analysis. Okay, so again, just do save, and let's just go solve. So, open up the solve menu, solve the current load step. Okay, so let's just click on that. It tells us we've got a two-dimensional problem, degrees of freedom are x and y, it's a static analysis. The matrix is symmetric, we've only got one load step. That all looks okay here, but for the moment this is fine. So let's just go okay, and it goes and it solves. Solution is done, okay. Close down the solution model, a module, open up the general post-processor, and take a look at the results summary. So we got one set of results because we had one load step, okay. so. Let's read in those results. Um, okay, they're the only ones we have. Let's just use it, but this is good practice for later on. So we'll read in that, that set of results. And let's plot some results. So let's plot the deformed shape. Okay, so that doesn't, it's kind of hard to see what's going on there. So let's put the undeformed edge as well. Okay, so you can see now there was the original shape and there's the new shape. So as we expected, it's thinned a little and it's expanded in the vertical direction. Okay. Um, if you wanted to exaggerate that, so plot control style displacement scaling. So at the moment, there, it's using. You can see that it's it's scaling up the displacement by about ten thousand here, because because this is infinitesimal strain. In other words, it's strain below the yield point of the material. It's not actually moving very very much at all. So here, the maximum displacement is actually point four seven eight by 10 to the minus 6 meters. It's tiny. So the only way we can see it is by scaling up the displacement. So let's just leave that as it is for the time being. Um, and let's just plot stress maybe. Nodal solution. Stress. Let's put stress in the uh, y direction. Okay, so there's stress in the y direction. So again, this isn't particularly a good result. This is kind of showing us some, some problems with our mesh, okay, and some problems with our boundary conditions as well maybe. Uh, so We'll come back to a lot of this stuff later, um, but this is just so you can see the way that those lines are jagged there. They shouldn't really be jagged. They should be kind of as curved and as smooth as possible. The fact that they're jagged is showing us that we need to consider remeshing our problem. 
Okay, so that's pretty much it for this first um, analysis. So it's very, very simple, but if you follow the methods I've given you here, and if you stick to that method and um, for more complex analysis, you'll find that it, it will really help you. Okay, so we'll see you next time. So remember, if you, if you enjoy this video, to like it, and um, please add it to your favorites as well.